Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Only Murders in the Building. A great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, obviously at the beginning of this episode, we kind of got to know more about Poppy, or rather Becky's circumstances, or what she had to deal with. Like, she was taking care of her father, but he was kind of a dick to her, and so she was kind of stuck in a life that she didn't want. She kind of said, like, right, my life is pretty normal. If you consider that most people's lives are pretty miserable, then yeah, I'm like right up there in the normal life. She worked for the mayor, but it's like the mayor even saying the line of, oh, you can't keep saying no to me forever, and it's like, Jesus. And so... Listening to Cinda's podcast, she heard about someone that wanted to disappear before their hand popped up. And I'm like, oh, the timing is interesting just because I am watching something else without spoiling what that thing is. Something else about someone trying to, like, disappear, kind of fake their death or whatever. And so at the very least, Becky faked her disappearance. And I guess when you look at everything in the setup at the beginning of the episode, that should have been the signs of where things were going to go. But um, Becky showed, well... But yeah, Becky showed up as Poppy and introduced her to self to Cinda. So I was like, okay, so Cinda, I was like, because that was a big question I had last episode. I was like, did Cinda know that Poppy is Becky? And I was like, but if she did, like, why would she make Poppy work for her? It's like, right. So Poppy brought her the idea of all is not okay in Oklahoma, a play on the mayor's um, slogan, all is okay in Oklahoma. And, you know, Cinda's like, right, is she missing or dead? It's like, well, she's missing. It's like, well, Cinda's like, I could really work with her being dead. And so, you know, Becky, Poppy, brought her this idea. But the problem is, Cinda is kind of the jerk that she is. And so she ends up going like, oh, like, from the very beginning, Poppy got no credit. Cinda took all the credit because that's just who she is, you know. And um, at the same time, we kind of find out about... Well, Cinda's motivation at the very least because she doesn't want to be a one and done murder podcaster because now it's like, oh, like now she's gotten the feel for it. She wants something else, especially when she has the only murders in the building podcast, like, you know, like stealing her limelight a little bit. So she was kind of upset. Well, it's hard to say, you know, jumping ahead a little bit. It makes you wonder, like, was that true or not? Or was that just kind of groundwork laid just to point everything towards Cinda? Who knows? I mean, that, that could be true, could not be. We'll have to, uh, uh, we never really get a clear answer on that. So it, I think that could, it's one of those elements to the episode that could still potentially like be either way. It could have been just something fabricated to point towards Cinder or Cinder really legitimately felt that way. Either way, now that they have figured out that it's like, well, at least they've strong belief it's Cinder, you know, our, our, uh, only murders in the building have to decide, well, what are they going to do about this? Like, how are they going to get her to, you know, they need to get her to confess. It's like, oh, we need to make her unravel like, uh, like, uh, it's like, I can't think of something that unravels. And I love that they just keep the conversation going. And it's like, oh, a sweater. And it's like, wait, a sweater is going to, what's going to drive Cinder crazy into confessing? It's like, no, 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 we'll unravel her like a sweater. Keep up, you know, Mabel. And it's like, and then later on they keep going and it's like, Oh, a, a mystery. It's like, what? What are you talking about? It's like, no, a mystery. You unravel like a mystery. No, a sweater. I'm like, I love the back and forth. And maybe it's just like, do you two just have strokes right now or what? You know, because it's like, because <clears throat> it's kind of all on the line because Sin is about to drop her finale for only murderers in the building. So it's like, right, we got to take Cinda down now before she puts this all on us. So many uh, red herrings in this episode. It's like it's twist upon twist upon twist upon twist. And I really, really like that because that's what any good murder mystery does. And, you know, even to the last second, keep you guessing. Um, the, the fact of the matter is Mabel ended up finding out what 14 Savage meant. At the time in the episode, we didn't know what it meant. But it's like, right, we need to... Uh, put on a grand finale. They're going to live stream the whole finale and to get, you know, Cinda to confess. So they set everything in motion. They get everyone, like some of the main people in the building help, you know, Jonathan. Um, I, and I love that he's the one that's like, 
wait, wait, is this a killer reveal? Is it a revealing a killer party? Or is this party going to be killer in nature? And just Howard being like, Jonathan Hush, just stand there and be hot. Um, and I love that when it comes up later on, when Cinda has the exact same question, Jonathan was like, see, I told you, I knew it was confusing. And it, and I love the grand reveal of it's going to be a reveal party and it's killer in nature. And they're like, oh, everyone's like, actually that worked. I, I get it. Double entendre. Like, honestly, it, it works being both like, I thought, I thought that was kind of, uh, really nice, but I thought it was interesting too. When Alice showed up, I was like, well, they did set up the whole, like Mabel, like asking Alice for like a, like, Alice was like, if you ever need me for something like this so I do you a favor, but I love they had also learned from Poppy all these weird things that Cinda doesn't like, the inside of a tomato, which I can I can get behind, like, I'm one of those weird people, I like ketchup, but I do not like tomatoes, and uh, Oliver being like, oh yeah, like, I get it, he's like, I hate tomatoes, I'm like, yeah, I, 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 I can get behind, like, the weirdness of, like, I would never have such an irrational fear of tomatoes, but I don't like tomatoes, and also her, like, not liking slow motion, I'm like, who doesn't like slow motion, like, I never get tired of it, I love slow motion stuff, so I'm like, oh, I'm all about that, so, I mean, I guess, I guess you're like, Gavin and Dan from the slow-mo guys, I guess, like, when that, I mean, I, I would never, even though it's kind of, like, part of your, like, job, I, I wouldn't think you'd get tired of it, but tangents and all that aside, um, either way, uh, like, them, like, also messing with her a little bit, kind of going all slow-mo and stuff, uh, convincing everyone else to, like, work with them in, uh, in that regard, uh, jumping back a little bit, um, what's her face being so upset that there's no cake and it's like, oh, you bastards, like, cheap down on it, and, uh, the fact is, uh, Miss Gambolini's there and she's just like, oh, this damn bird, I thought we got rid of her, um, and also it's like, oh, who's had any, like, theater practice, um, you know, experience, and it's like, well, Jonathan has, and so has Howard, and also Lester, and then, like, they're like, oh, wow, what happened, Lester? It's like, well, he's like, well, I qu left out, you know, Broadway behind to follow my passion to being a doorman you're like really and he's like what no you stupid no of course not i didn't get hired i developed a drinking problem i got clean and got the first job i could possibly get and then just got stuck here for the most of my life and it's like oh actually that's really sad and he's and just even oliver's like okay on that downer note it's like yo lester dropping all those um it's like wow poor Lester, but I think he likes his job now, but it's still not the path in life, obviously, he wanted, it's just kind of even sad and knowing, like, right, this is the job he kind of got stuck with after all this time, but it's like, right, we're going to find out who killed Bunny, and we need everyone's help to make this a thing, so they sit Cinda down, and they, like, use all their tactics to get her to reveal herself, and then it's just kind of like a, no, it's actually not Cinda, she's not the killer, it's like, who is it, and it's Alice, I was like, what? I was like, are they real? I was like, well, I was like, well, we never did rev go back to the whole fact is that she was the killer in the game potentially, and I'm like, I guess maybe truth be told is it was uh, it, the card was there, but I guess that's kind of implying that actually Mabel was the because well, Mabel never revealed her card, did she? So I think she herself was like the actual killer, maybe in that re regard, and maybe like her, like while her and Alice were doing their thing, like the card flew and landed in her purse. Cause we never actually got an answer to that. So, cause I'm, I knew Alice wasn't going to be the killer back, even back then, but I was like, I was like, oh, I, just, I was like, are we really doing that? And it's like, huh, that's interesting. And then like, you know, uh, Mabel setting everything up to be like, oh, like you, you came after Bunny because like, right. Um, my life, my life's tragedy was always going to be your greatest piece of art, and obviously it would escalate even more if you framed me, because you tried to go to Bunny for, like, her Rose Cooper painting, but it was way out of your price range. And then the moment Alice started being like, oh, you figured it all out, you smug bitch, I was like, yo, complete person, I was like, it's a, I was like, oh, it's stupid, it's a setup. And the moment she grabbed the knife and stabbed Charles, I was like, I didn't even buy it for a second, I was like, oh my god, it's a setup. I was like, and the way they're playing it, I was like, Wait, who are they playing this? And the way Poppy's reacting, I was like, oh my god, it was Poppy. I was like, she's the one Detective Kreps met with. I was like, because I felt like something was off with that reveal of her just being like, I'm Becky and her revealing that. And like, uh, there was something off about that. But I was like, oh, maybe things are what they are. But it's like, no, Cinda's over there talking to uh, Mabel being like, oh man, I should give you your own podcast. You're you're great and stuff, and then for Poppy, it's like, wait, you can see, like, she's getting irritated, it's like, right, the entire time you thought you were giving them ammunition to bother 
Cinda, but secretly they're setting everything up to bother you. Uh, in the grand scheme of things. And it's like, oh, like her, uh, just because she caught like an Australian killer or something like that, she's like, I'm English, you twat. Um, but the fact is, and then she starts sneezing. I was like, oh my God, yes, you're the killer to allergies. But it's not, like, once again, I thrown it out the last episode about like, oh, could it have been Jonathan? But I was like, oh, maybe that's a psych out. Because I, I was like, how would... Once I, I kept jumping through loops at the end of last episode, being like, well, could it be Jonathan because he's got the sneezing, but, I, but that could be a red herring, and it totally was, because Jonathan's allergic to cats, sure, but, like, because I was like, well, Howard was in, um, was at, uh, Bunny's place earlier when they were doing the meeting and stuff. So I thought like, okay, maybe there was some cat data behind. So that's why Jonathan was sneezing. But it's like, right here's a character you're introducing last second. Like, would they really end up being a killer? You know, so that should have been a, a key flag there also. But you know, but it's like she's allergic to Miss Gambolini. Like, of course, and kind of unraveling everything because. She even says at the end, she just wanted Cinda to notice her. She just wanted to be a good podcaster. Get away from my... She she went through so much to reinvent herself just for Cinda to not notice her. And just, like, that's what... She was always still just second fiddle. No matter what idea she came up with, Cinda just took them. She was still doing the whole thing like, right, I'm going to pay my dues. But then it's like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going a, I'm to a orchestrate stuff on my own. And I'm going to... The problem is didn't things kind of went off rails right from the beginning because she was trying to get Oliver, Mabel, and Charles out of the apartment at the same time, like while she was setting Mabel up. But the problem is things didn't go her plan because Mabel found her. And I love that reveal of like, right, Cinda was there at that time, but so was Poppy, and it make it makes total sense because um where Cinda would never go anywhere without Poppy. So, of course, it's like, of course, Poppy's going to be there. And she's the smart woman that he fell in love. I was like, of course, of course. So, because it's like, oh, how do you know about Detective Cripps? So, I guess, like, the whole planting the hair and everything, that was her and Poppy. But I guess it's like, because I guess Troopy Toad is like, uh, maybe Cinda did work with Detective Cripps when it came to the all is okay all is not okay in um, Oklahoma, but that was like after the fact. Like Poppy had already, uh, well, Becky had already reinvented herself as Poppy and was probably giving um, Cindy the idea about everything and probably was like, oh, this is a detective who's working the case and yada, yada, yada. That Poppy probably introduced her, uh, Cindy to him that way, but was secretly having him plant like the hair evidence to be like, oh, yeah, this is her and, you know, um, Faking evidence and faking the story to make it seem like something happened to Becky when it didn't. So they had great plans of like, oh, like the, she's going to become famous. He's going to get a promotion. He'll finally be able to move out of uh, the shitty place that he's living. And she's like, oh, yeah, plus I and I love they just casually. She's like, oh, yeah, plus I found out about the tunnel ways. It's like, oh, my God, that's so amazing. I also love this beautiful line of like, oh, yeah, you thought you were going to frame three A-list celebrities. And then Marv laughs and they turn to him. He's like, oh, I thought you guys were joking. It's like, well, it's funny because, yes, and, you know, there's a double layer to that because, like, obviously in the confines of the show, they're not a-list celebrities. They are just like D-listers, you know, or something like that. They, you know, that, um, in that regard, um, you're not like A-list celebrities, but obviously the, the joke behind that being the fact is, no, each, our trio are actually A-list celebrities in real life, you know, so, it, you know, it, it, there's a double layer to that joke. Um, either way, that was, once again, I just, I love that twist upon twist upon twist. Uh, so, like I said, I, I can only assume that Alice and, um, Mabel thing is that, because Mabel, the fact is we never really got a, an answer to that, and being like, oh, what, what was about that whole car thing, it's like, well, that was playing into the fact is that she is a liar, like, maybe that's what that's supposed to be, or like I said, maybe it actually was Mabel who was the killer, so, that, we don't get a clear answer for that, you can just only assume, um, or maybe she actually did tell Mabel later on, or 
at well after the fact. I don't know. It, it, obviously, but it plays into it. But like I said, the moment like the Charles thing happened, that's when I was like, oh yeah, it's definitely on fake. Because I'm like, are we really doing this like Alice thing in the last second? But it's like, no, 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 no. It was Poppy the entire time. And the reason why, um, and I love, it's like, oh, like, when did you guys get on to me? Uh, ever since uh, the diner, because of your order. Because the moment Williams got back to them about the knife, because neither Poppy nor uh, Detective Kreps know about the knife uh, being brought into evidence, because Detective Williams kept done on the low, and she ran the DNA, and it came back to Becky. Um, so, tied because it was like, oh, it, it's some dead girl from Oklahoma. So... And then it's like 14 Savage is 14 Sandwich. Because whoever like orders that, which obviously it's like uh, Poppy ended up getting that particular order. Because she was like, yeah, my, um, what was it? My, um, did she say like her, like she got it for Cinder or something like that. But also like her sister herself, her sister likes it. Or, I, I forgot what she was saying. So, or at least, uh, Poppy's sister or something like that. Pop, I send a sister or somebody like that. Either way, kind of, you know, it's all about the details, but I'm kind of getting caught up in the details. But, um, I did like the ending, though, where it's like, right, they, uh, they put up their season two finale, and then, um, at the same time, Cinda's putting up hers, sponsored by Gutman, and I'm like... The gift that keeps on giving. I love that. It's like, and it got uh, such a big push. So I'm like, oh, that that works out beautifully. So, and Charles been like, well, now that this is all settled, we could go back to having regular conversations without, you know, you know, without our conversations being tied by murder. And you're like, well, we got pieces of that here and there, but it's like, yeah, murder is what has tied them together for the past two seasons. So it is kind of like them pausing for a second, being like, so what do we talk about? You know, it's like once again, like Oliver and. Um, Charles have a lot in common because of their past circumstances, you know, them being about the same age. Once again, Mabel being from another generation, it just kind of like, oh, like kind of, you know, uh, makes it so that they don't really 100% click or understand each other to, to some extent. Don't always have the most, you know, uh, murder was their common language, you know? So, other than that, um, the Will situation surprised me where it's like, Will's like, Dad, like, if you're not my father, then I don't know who is because uh, Oliver was going to confess to Will, and I was like, oh man, I was like, wow, I was, I once again, I was dead certain that Teddy was going to say like, nah, fuck you, I'm a, what did I say, I'm a fuck you, but it's like, no, I guess like this is him, like, right, considering everything that's going down, it's like, right, I'm not going to screw things up between you, me and Theo, which once again, maybe this will present itself where. I don't know if now that it's kind of out there in the open and whether or not Will's going to try and reach out to his bio dad or not. I don't know. But the reason why it's like, oh, how did you know? And Will's like, because I know all your tells. I'm like, well, he is your son after all. I was like, that's interesting. It's like, to be fair, he taught Will that from a very young age. And more, he's, uh, I literally said Martin, geez. Uh, Oliver, uh, you know, um, is so good at telling other people's tales, not realizing his own, you know? So, I thought that was interesting. And they had their beautiful moment, you know? It's like, oh, Oliver gets a call, and uh, a year production is set in motion. You're like, oh, interesting. We And I wasn't expecting it, because I thought he was going to, like, do the right thing and be like, no, you know what? I'm going to turn the job down. I'm going to be... But you could tell that look on Will's face being like, oh, like, finally him and his dad are in a good place, but now his dad's back to taking over a uh, production, and that kind of consumed his life, and he wasn't really there for Will before, but I'm, I'm curious to see what that kind of, I mean, that's a year time skip we're kind of, in, in season three, we'll probably um, end up getting, like, a, a lot of that filled in, obviously, so that's definitely going to be interesting, because I think that's going to give the show an even different, not feeling vibe, but just, it's going to give a, a, a new structure, is how we're going to, like, feel, go back at, like, because at least, like, Bunny's like last day we got that an entire episode dedicated to that right but in this particular case like it is a whole year what surprised me is when we saw um uh, when we saw um god Paul Rudd because the thing because I already knew Paul Rudd was joining the show for season three because I was just like you know checking um news sites about you know um 
you know, latest nerd and geek stuff. And uh, I ended up seeing that. I was like, oh, that's interesting. So when I saw him here, I was like, oh, I didn't know you were set up in this season. I didn't know whether he was going to be like the new, because I didn't, he's playing a character, Ben. He's not playing himself. Is it, he's playing an actor in it. So I was like, oh, okay. Because, you know, I didn't know if it was going to be like a Sting or Amy Schumer type of thing. It's like, no, he's not playing Paul Rudd. And the moment they introduced him the way they did, I was like, are they setting you up to get murdered, Ben? And it's like, oh, he is. But to be fair, a lot of season three is most likely going to be... I mean, he's probably going to be in season three, like, even more than, like, Tim Kona. The like, actor who played Tim Kona. Because Tim, like, was popping in here and there. But it's it's not as... Um, it's not as, uh, he's probably going to be a lot more because it is a whole year of probably like flashing back and stuff. I am, I'm really curious to see ultimately how they end up. Like, I wonder, is it going to have like a once upon a time slash law slash arrow? Cause those are the three primary shows I know that do the whole like half the episode is kind of flashback. At least parts of the episode are flashback and part of the episode are, uh, set in present day. It's just going to be interesting to see how they decide to structure that considering like, well, these episodes are like, I mean, depending on the episode, they push anywhere between 30 to, I think the most has probably been like, I think this episode might be the most because it starts like 37-ish minutes, so like, in between that time frame, so, I, I'm curious to see what that looks like going forward, um, but also the setup of, because like, I, I didn't even talk about it, Charles and the, um, well, for one, him and Joy are together, and it seems like things are good because, you know, we see Joy at the, um, but that's going to be interesting to see what ends up happening. Um, uh, Andrea Martin or Andrea Martin's also in uh, Evil. So, I mean, she might not be as prevalent in Evil, but it's like balancing like filming that. And like, it depends on how much they use her. I'm curious because it's like, right, you're doing this and season four of Evil. Like, maybe she's just not in season four of Evil as much. So it gives her more time or maybe just the scheduling just allows for her to be, do both. I don't, I don't know. That's definitely going to be interesting to see how that works out, especially like her and um, Charles are dating that things kind of, um, I, I did like that. I mean, especially when he's just like, right, on a Brazos reboot, it's like, right, they want you out of the wheelchair, your dementia is in remission, so it's all good. It's like, yeah, him and Joy are dating, Lucy's obviously fully back in his life. I'm curious if there are going to be any interactions between Lucy, uh, Charles, and her mom, and, uh, her mom's new beau. I'm curious, like, how that's all going to work out. I want to, uh, I feel like I remember, like, I don't know if Paul Rudd's the only season three casting I'm aware of. I feel like it might be. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if we're going to get any more Cara Delevingne as Alice. I mean, because she, I mean, like, you know, Mabel decides to kind of finally move forward. She's redecorating the apartment and she paints over the painting, like covering it up. Probably, like, I don't know if she's going to put a new piece there or just leave it blank for now, but, you know, finally kind of moving forward. So her and Alice, Alice and Mabel are in a good place, but not in a, like a whole, like, we can be together thing. It's like, you still, like, try to use my strategy for your own art. So, like, I'm not over that. But I think they could at least head in back in the direction of friendship. It's like, um, it is kind of sad, like, none of the relationships 100% work out, like her and Oscar and. Now her and um, Alice. Once again, we'll, we'll see whether that ends up being a thing or not. Um, but the moment Ben went on stage, you know, Paul Rudd's character went on stage and started coughing, I was like, are you about to get poisoned? Or were you poisoned ahead of time? Was it the smoke that was poisoning you? But also him and Charles apparently have beef. He's like, stay away from her. I'm like, who's that in reference to? Um... He's like, I know what you did. I'm like, keeping things obviously super vague. Things we won't get answers to until season three. So. It is interesting, though. Um, well, when you think about it, it's like, well, Ben didn't die in the building. He died outside of the building. He died in a... On, but maybe Ben moved into the building. So maybe that's going to be like the rub of that. Maybe that's going to be their stipulation. It's like, well, he wasn't... He didn't die in the building like... Tim and Bunny and technically Zoe. I mean, I think you could also. That's interesting too. It's like, well, her obviously case gets lumped into everything because it's like, right? Um, Jen was respond. Well, Jen, like it, it all ties into the. Um, well, because that's such a separate thing. But I was about to say it's like, well, Zoe kind of died outside because of 
where her body fell, but it's obviously about the podcast itself is about mainly the murders in the building. So it's like maybe they'll justify it by being like, well, he died on our production, but also he probably moved into the building in this past year. So maybe that kind of leads to some him and Charles beef or something. I don't know. I wanted to. I was like, not less Ben is the new beau. Like, I was like, do we even know the guy that his that Lucy's mom married? So maybe that, maybe they moved into the building and maybe that's what that's about. Maybe it's like, oh, stay away from her. Like, maybe it's in reference to like, oh, like, stay away from like Lucy's mom because you're not a good guy. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm probably reading too much into it. I just think it's interesting considering I was like, right, I, you know, the fact is we probably will get a lot more Lucy going forward too because, you know, her and Charles. Uh, she's going to continue being a part of Charles' life. He's going to continue being a part of her. So, uh, but obviously, it's like right. They went a year without murder in their lives, and lo and behold, bam! It's right back into their lives. So it's like cool. And even Mabel being like, "You have got to be fucking kidding me!" It's like, yep, you can't escape it. Granted, you got a year off. At least you know season one to season two. It's like, oh, that was pretty immediate. Like the night of you solving that murder. Uh, well, like, it was, like, basically, like, maybe two, no, it was some, some time in between, um, them solving the murder and Bunny's murder, but it wasn't, like, that long of a time, and now it's, like, oh, you had a full year of no murder, so, makes you wonder, are we gonna get any updates about Saz and, um, and, uh, God, Jen, you know, the way that was kind of set up, so, and like I said, like, Oliver and, uh, Will's relationship, like, has that been hampered by the most recent developments? What about Theo and Teddy? What about their circumstances? It's definitely gonna be interesting to see, uh, what season three has in store for us all, um, all in all. Uh, I'm excited to jump into the next mystery, uh, when season three drops, especially now I'm officially caught up now. So it, I'm, I'm excited to be watching this week to week instead of like, kind of like watching everything in bulk like I have been. So it's going to be interesting either way. Uh, but that's really all I wanted to talk about to the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and good bye.